Hey there, Chad and Macy back with another conversation in autism, uh, siblings edition, right? This is part two or the second one we've done, but really they're not in any particular order. Today we thought we would just jump right into some questions uh, that came in the comments. Now, remember, if you have a question for us, a specific question, it's hard to keep track of them if they're uh, asked throughout these videos. So click on this video right there and uh, ask your question there. And that's where we're kind of keeping track of them all. Uh, so today this question is from Argo Fontes. Hope I said that right. Very similar situation to ours. As the dad of an autistic son with an older neurotypical sister, from Macy's perspective, what could I do to make my daughter's life regarding her brother easier, better, or less stressful? First off, I would say talking about it, just one-on-one -on -one talking about it, and um, really ask her how she's feeling about everything, and if she's struggling with anything, um, that being with having a brother with autism. Do you feel like you've ever had a hard time coming to me with and wanting to talk about the challenges? Um, no, I feel like you've mostly asked me, like, oftentimes you ask me about how I'm feeling and if okay. you can do anything. Yeah, that's one of the things that Jamie, my wife, and I noticed pretty early on is that Max required a lot of attention, especially when he was much younger. And I would see Macy quietly standing by if we were... Um, you know, at home or if we were somewhere else at a function or especially if we we're doing an activity that Macy was excited about and the wheels sort of fell off because we had to address something that Max was dealing with, I could see kind of that, oh man, here we go again, look on Macy's face. And so uh, I just noticed it early and, and I felt like, I, th I hope mom and I did a pretty good job since you were little of saying, hey, sorry that we um, had to do that. I'm sorry your brother uh, kind of exploded back there. Thank you for being patient. How are you feeling? Do you feel like that's kind of the right approach? or mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything I could have done better or anything else that you would say to the person that asked the question? Just making the effort goes a long way. Um, w what else would there be? One-on-one um, -on -one time, like activities or like going out to lunch or something, that's really important. So one thing that Macy and I have done is put projects together that f actually force us to spend time together. And not that we did it uh, and it was forcing a negative thing, it was forcing a very positive thing. Uh, back in 2014, Macy, 2015? 2015, some, I think. Yeah. Macy asked for a ball python for Christmas, and I had uh, had ball pythons and boa constrictors uh, in a past life, and always wanted to breed them, and so when Macy asked for a ball python for Christmas, I decided to uh, take it one step further and create a project where Macy and I could learn together. We could focus on something together. And so we decided to breed ball pythons. And for five years we did this. And it forced us to spend time together every day, whether it was cleaning or just checking on the animals or feeding. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd spend you know, a couple hours on the weekends or whatever. And um, we learned about a lot of science, like some genetics and um, had to buy an incubator or build an incubator and lots of crazy stuff went into this process. And it was neat because, you know, if we neglected it, animals would die. And yeah. so it forced us to every day uh, spend time together and focus on a project together. And uh, 
so that I think is a is a good thing for one on one time is just set something up, set something up that requires you to uh, disconnect yourself from um, the the other sort of limelight that's going on in your home. Let's just call it um, autism, and pull yourself away and purposely set up something that you two can do together that uh, is very meaningful, where you can grow in your relationship. You guys can maybe learn something new, um, build something together, or whatever the case may be. Um, I thought that, you know, that was pretty fun. But in the last couple of years, Macy has sort of grown out of it, and we, and slash you mostly, have sunk your teeth into something else. Do you want to explain that? Um, I started just this past year during quarantine, I started an online Etsy shop selling greeting cards. Yeah, and so uh, it was neat because Macy, when Macy came to me and said, hey dad, I'm, I think I'm ready to be done with snakes. Um, she's one of the most creative kids I've known. And so I didn't look at that as a bummer I looked at it as a new opportunity. Okay, well let's shift gears. Let's focus on something else. And so I've taken some of my technology uh, skills and been able to uh, hand them down to her. And you've been able to like learn new programs. Mm -hmm. And we've tried to grow this uh, greeting card business. You are at the helm, though. You're you're steering that ship, and you're doing a great job and uh, I, I don't, we don't spend as much time together on that, but it's something that I do still get to be involved in. And so yeah. as your child grows, it may change and morph and, um, but setting something up in your path that you have to get around somehow together, having that time where you say, we have to do this together, I think is a pretty awesome thing. So Mace, um, anything else? Um, going on with the one-on-one -on -one time, we used to do breakfasts in the morning, and I think we said that in our last video, but we used to do breakfasts in the morning, and I think that was like a really special time, and like something that you could do easily, just to like go away from the rest of your family, away from your house, and go somewhere else, and talk just one-on-one -on -one is really special. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was, you know, while the rest of the house is sleeping, we would get up early and um, go and, and uh, spend that time together and try to wake up together and <laughs> have a good conversation and, and do it in a different venue where you're not distracted by things going on at home. You got to, you know, put your phone in your pocket and make sure that uh, you guys maintain good eye contact and talk and... Um, I, I've really enjoyed that. You know what else I've really enjoyed? <laughs> exercising with you. We've done a lot of exercising and in our house we're fortunate enough to have purchased an older home but it had a sauna in it when we bought it and we've kept the sauna and uh, one of the things that Macy and I will do is get up really early and crank the sauna up um, and get in there and we'll we'll talk and we'll read the Bible and pray together and start our day with a hot sauna and a cold shower and uh, feel alive for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is there's tons of stuff. Um, but it, I, it sort of boils down to, I think, being diligent about uh, going to your daughter. If, if I wait for Macy to come to me, if she's concerned or she's feeling neglected or overshadowed or forgotten about, I've failed in as a dad. I need to go to her and say, hey, Macy, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about being in the situation that you're in where we have to pay a lot of attention to Max and not as much attention to you? Are you doing okay? Are you able to cope? And uh, process this stuff. Can I do a better job? And so m as the dad go to the daughter or as the parent go to the child and say and don't don't wait for them to come to you and then set up really fun stuff to do uh, that force you to spend time together I think.
I think that's a cool one. Mm -hmm. You good? See you guys later.